the word of the day, ACA, A double C R A. Yes, yeah, I've also typed in the chat so I can stop sharing and then I can continue with the, uh, the day, uh, which is uh, analytics tools. Uh, considerations. So, uh, before you use analytics tools, uh, before you implement them, there have to be a number of considerations that you have to look at. So, basically, uh, you have to look at what data you want to present, as we said earlier, how you want it to be presented, how you present your data already. For example, we had uh, we have we have the paper based scorecards. So when we looked at those scorecards, there were also analytic tools that we wanted to be in DHIS, and then eventually the scorecard was developed, incorporated in DHIS. So basically, there are a number of considerations that you look at when you uh, when you are implementing analytics tools. So implementing analytics tools is uh, greatly affected by local requirements. What is the local program looking for? What are programs looking for? What is the context? Um, are there standard reports that people are already using? Uh, uh, are there reports that people are using to review uh, uh, in, in a very specific uh, format? So you look at those uh, components and then it determines the type of analytics tools that you're going to implement. So basically, com uh, completely custom outputs that are specified to context of program, reports that, are, uh, that individuals are used to reviewing in a very specific format. Maybe your report comes in, uh, in, in uh, maybe your report comes in uh, Excel. So you might want to use, maybe in DHIS, you might want to use the people table to also have the report in a similar format like you use. The language requirements for data, description and interpretations. Uh, so if you look at that, you would figure out that the custom app development or report development may be needed to meet those local uh, needs. For example, I said about the, I talked about the uh, the scorecard. So after the scorecard was, was developed, the paper-based scorecard, you would see that in DHIS, there was a custom scorecard application that was developed to meet those local needs. You also look at training on using the apps to generate the outputs along with interpreting and using these outputs often needs to be conducted. You have to conduct trainings. For someone to be able to use the bottleneck analysis tool, to use the WHO data quality tool, to use the scorecards, there is need for that person to go through different uh, trainings to be able to implement that and to be able to use it and make sense out of the data. So training is also one major component when you're implementing analytic tools. So also being able to convert a culture of regular data use can also be part, uh, particularly difficult if not already embedded into the system. So if you have people that have data but they don't use it, despite the analytical tools that you implement, they won't be able to use it. So it's uh, a responsibility of us like DHIS2 experts to be able to instill that culture in the people that are using that data to be able to use the data to be able to make some analysis and use that analysis for decision making and to be able to uh, implement what the data is saying. That's why in the previous session we were going through uh, that uh, related actions component whereby we are defining what needs to be done after this happens and all that. So we are trying to convert that culture of people being able to use uh, the different uh, the different uh, results that come from uh, the analysis that we make. So when you are implementing, uh, before implementing this uh, these analytical tools, one has to start by applying the different outputs that are currently generated and reviewed either outside or within DHIS2. So you look at what you want to uh, put out there, and then you look at what is uh, what DHIS2 is capable of doing or what you actually do on a paper basis. 
Uh, the same example of a scorecard uh, is a good example in this scenario to say there was a scorecard paper based, and then we were using that, and then eventually we incorporated it into DHIS2 uh, to have the very same uh, uh, um, to mimic and develop in DHIS2. So you determine which of these can be implemented in DHIS2, and determine which of these can be enhanced by using the features in DHIS2. So there are already other features. Uh, there is, we have Excel, Excel can do a lot of things, but we also have the pivot tables in DHIS2. We can also do a lot of things. We can drill down to facilities. We can drill down to, uh, uh, we can drill the periods down to way before and all that. So you look at how some of these outputs that we are looking for can be enhanced by using some of the tools that are later than DHIS2. Or you can look at these tools and say, this tool is not in DHIS2, but we can seek for uh, guidance in how this can be incorporated in DHIS2, developed and then be commissioned for use. You also assess if any of the up to outputs may require custom solutions to achieve that. So there are also other solutions like the WHO data quality application. Uh, there, was, uh, there was a concept to say, we want to achieve this. And then this uh, was then embedded into the system by developing the WHO uh, data quality issue. So you provide a demo using the in-country data, if possible, to generate more detailed discussions. So you can, if you want to implement these analytical tools, you can sit as a team, as a DHS2 data quality monitoring and variation teams, project management teams to come together, and then you can do a demo to them and say, there is this tool that we can be using, or there is this tool that we are using paper based, and then we want to push it into DHIS2, or we want to be able to, for an application to be developed in DHIS2 to, to do so, 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 so. So you can provide that demo, you can demonstrate to them how it's done, and then you can have a comprehensive discussion, a consultative discussion with them to determine which of the uh, tools can be implemented in DHIS2 or which ones are already in DHIS2 and they can enhance how um, uh, uh, analysis is done. And then uh, you can uh, constitute that as a consortium and then uh, implement it in DHIS. So this process should always involve the subject matter, program experts, and as well as uh, DHIS2 experts uh, that understand its analytical capability. So there are people out there that are not DHIS2 experts, but they've been using this platform for quite a, uh, a long time and they understand how those analytical tools work and all that. So it's really relevant to have these people together, have a discussion, have a comprehensive consultative discussion to say, we want to use this. We want to uh, see how this can enhance our analytical, uh, analytical uh, analysis of uh, the data that we have. How best can we do it? Because most of the times we find that most of the DHS2 experts, maybe they're, they're already involved in the subject matter, the people that are going to be using the, uh, the analytical tools and then you implement, then you find that this hasn't been accepted by the ministries and then it's a, a no-go type, uh, type of situation whereby they're saying you cannot implement it because you didn't involve this department. If it's LHD involved in there, the productive health department, you can consult them and be with them and then plan together to uh, implement this. So the process should lead to a lot map in which you are trying how various outputs will be implemented in DHIS2. So you can come up with a web plan or a lot map to say from this period up to this period, we are going to do so, so, so. And then you can set milestones so that you can be uh, tracking your progress. You can say from this group of already discussions and then we'll come up with the needs and then you do this, this, and then you, uh, you do um, a technical approach where you see which ones would work, which ones would not work, and then you come back with a report and then you determine how best you can implement that. So the load map will help you to track the progress of that particular uh, discussion that you had earlier on with the experts, with the subject matter and the program experts to say, we want to use this particular tool to track this progress. How best can we do? So you also develop that roadmap to aid you do that. In case of an existing uh, DHS system, it may be a good time to review existing outputs and see how they can be updated to reflect new features in the, next, in the latest versions of DHS2. 
So you also see that as DHS2 expands, you look at the need, you look at the solutions that are available, and then you look at which solution can best uh, address this and how best uh, can this fit in an updated version of a, a particular analytical tool. You can also consider developing new outputs. For example, the scorecard that I've been talking about, that may not have been considered previously. Uh, you can look at the bottleneck analysis. Uh, bottleneck analysis is a good tool for uh, tracking root cause of uh, uh, a lot of issues in DHIS2. So you can also be thinking in areas like developing new outputs and uh, embedding them into the system. You can also make sure the, to test these features in a safe environment before deciding to implement them. So uh, this, this is for data protection or in case the system may crash. So you need to have a test environment whereby you test these new tools, you test the new developments, and if they work on the test environments, you can also put them on another environment, development, development environment, test environment, and then you can push them into the production instance when you are comfortable to say the tools are working and they're not causing any problems to the main database because you may end up having a scenario where you lose the data for the whole national database if you just go straight into the main instance and then test some of the tools. So this is a simulation of uh, how you can do that. So if it's a, an aggregate system, you need to have a system for production, you need to have a system for development. So on the development system, that's where you have development. Uh, that's where you do testing, you do, uh, you try out new things, and then if they work that, you can push them into, um, into the, uh, uh, the, the main production system that you have. The very same with uh, tracker and uh, aggregate data, you can also uh, test the track, uh, the tracker you're developing. If you see that it's working properly, you can push it into, um, into the main instance. So, uh, having this uh, whole process done. There are also other key components that are supposed to be looked at, like capacity gaps. Um, do you have the technical skills? Do you have the technical capital to, uh, to develop these and implement them? So configuring and implementation of analytical tools, they require different skill, skill sets. You need to have people that are able, uh, that are able to configure these platforms on an existing system without causing any problems. So understanding of all of these different analytical capabilities that are within DHS2 is also a key. Um, the configuration required to support uh, the creation of these outputs. Uh, do you have programmers if you want to? So are they taking the sound to be able to 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 use these analytical tools? So you look for capabilities that are already in DHIS and you capitalize on those and use them and maybe enhance them, or you think about totally new solutions that can be incorporated there. So if you have the technical skills, you have the people that can support that, you have the people that can build capacity in other people, then you are ready to go to implement these uh, uh, different analytical tools. So you have to have a detailed input from subject matter, what they want, how they want it to be presented, and how it will be supported. So the implementation and configuration stuff, we need to understand this information in some detail in order to implement the solutions in DHIS2. So you also need to have uh, support maintenance of the infrastructure as discussed previously to say you have this set up, but you have the technical skills to support this, to sustain it. Because some, they will bring projects, let's say uh, an individual wants something in DHIS2. They want to incorporate what they want in DHIS2, but it has a limited time to say a project of two years, but DHIS2 will stay there forever. Do you have the technical uh, skills and uh, the, the financial support to uh, sustain this implementation uh, after the project is over? So you also need to look at those areas to see if your analytical tools can be uh, successfully uh, 
are uh, implemented. Training staff can also be a challenging as peering outputs. So understanding how to interpret these outputs and reviewing these outputs correctly may not always be um, possible at all levels. So maybe you want to do analysis at grassroots level, at facility level. Maybe you want to do analysis at DHO level and at national level. The skill sets and the understanding may be different depending on the people that you're, you, 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 you're, you're involved in, in, your, in, your, in your implementation. So having to understand who is going to use these analytical tools, what are the skill sets, how, uh, how, how best do they use DHIS2 is also an important aspect because it will help you to understand the training needs. What areas do you need to train these people in and who will be doing the trainings of uh, these people? So it's important to also understand the training uh, uh, concept of these, uh, uh, these analytical tools implementation. So uh, to address the wide variety of inputs that are required, we recommend the development of DHIS2 core team within the country. Um, as, uh, as a country in Malawi, we also have the core team that involves um, everyone else that is working on DHIS2 technically. So we have the technical team. So we have people that are doing systems administration, we have people that are doing capacity building. We have people that are doing um, development. People that are sorry doing implementation of uh, tracker. People that are doing implementation of aggregate. So it's really important to have a DHIS two core team in your country to say uh, we have a team of twenty people. All of these twenty people may be distributed in different things. Some are good at capacity building. Some are good at resource mobilization. Some are good at concept development. Some are good at programming, some are good at systems administration. So it's really important to have uh, a core team that, uh, that, has, that has that technical and uh, administrative knowledge in DHIS2 so that you can easily implement this. So when you develop a new output or uh, you develop a new tool for analysis, you can, you can see it as a core team and discuss how best it can be implemented. And also this helps when you want to do updates to say there is a new version of DHIS2 out there. How, how best can we do the upgrade? How best can we do uh, an enhancement of this particular uh, application? How best can we do this? Because you have the technical knowledge in-house. So basically this core team should, have, should be involved in training activities together in order to foster teamwork and exchange ideas. In addition, they should get used to solving problems with each other uh, with each other's input together based on their own expertise. So you can bring uh, a team of programmers to say we have five programmers on the team. So they can come and do some analytical thinking and critical thinking on the issues that you're facing and also um, determine the best uh, solutions to those particular problems. They will also gain further appreciation for each other's work in the system as they are working together as a team. So you have a developer, you have a system that mean, and you have uh, an implementer. So if all of these people come together and they, they work together, they will understand the development concept, the systems administration concept, and the implementation concept. And in the end, you have uh, different tools coming out. You have an instance that is always up and running, and then you won't have the system downtown because all of these people are working together and implementing these uh, particular systems. So in some cases, it may be difficult to address all the gaps in DHIS. So well-trained IT staff who can uh, maintain our DHIS2 system may not be available. Implementation, configuration, development, and all of that, they may not be available. You may have a developer, but you don't have a system that means. So some of these issues can be, uh, can be can be can be addressed by collaborating with other people that are in the same sector. You have the Ministry of Health, where you have IT professionals that are more interested maybe in uh, uh, systems administration. You can incorporate those and work with those and get some knowledge from them about systems administration and be able to implement this. And then also you can also try to build, uh, if you see someone with potential in systems administration, you can also try to build their capacity in systems administration and also maybe taking some DHIS2 technical courses may also help to address some of these issues. So you can have an academy where you have um, your trainings in systems administration. So if you attend those academies, you may build your capacities in systems administration and then be able to do administration and uh, server management. 
So in these cases, it may be best to identify which gaps uh, that need strengthening and work on a plan or action to address them. So the actions are those that I'm saying, attending academies, being able to incorporate the Minister of Health, uh, IT department, and identifying uh, people that are good at systems administration and work with them and get some knowledge from them, or being able to build capacity in other people uh, that are that have potential, but maybe they're working in capacity building, so you can build some systems administration capacity in them and be able to uh, uh, to to work on DHS too. So custom tools. So if you have assessed, assessed that some of your outputs will not be possible using DHIS2, you may you may go for the custom tools. So for example, uh, in Malawi we had uh, we had issues in reporting LNMH. LNA, LNA, LNA so I think we had a GIZ funded uh, project that we worked on uh, on a standard report LNMH reporting uh, uh, form which is in DHIS now. Uh, so we have a standard reporting form. We have a number of standard reporting forms where we work on that. And also some of the analytical tools that we use, we also use some external analytical tools. If DHIS2 is not doing what we want, we also use Tableau. So there is a family planning dashboard that was developed, a comprehensive one. We developed one in DHIS, but we also needed some, some people to have access to those platforms whilst offline. So we incorporated the, the, the Tableau, Tableau uh, public platform where we configured the family planning, but it's also pulling data from the DHIS. So you can also look at those uh, platforms. You can use Power BI for visualizations. You can use Tableau, you can use Google Chats. You can use a number of uh, visualizations tools and that connect with uh, DHIS2 using the connectors. And then you can pull data from DHIS2 and you can analyze this data and present this data in visualizations in other platforms. So there are basic custom uh, 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 tools that are available, the, the graphs and different graphs in uh, different things, uh, the maps, they can come from different applications that are out there alone. So you can do a research as a DHS2 core team to say, we want this to be done this way, but DHS2 currently is not doing it. Maybe in the near future, DHS2 will do it. So you can use that uh, uh, that opportunity to do a research on different visualization tools and be able to uh, analyze this data and put out the uh, color and informative analysis and visualizations out there to the people using other platforms. As of now, DHS2 requires you to have uh, to have some login credentials so that you can view some of the data, but you can use connectors to push this data outside of DHIS and have it on Tableau, and then you can present it on a, on a different type of platform without people needing to log into the platform. So basically, um, that's uh, what I had for this session where we're looking at uh, implementation considerations of analytical tools. Uh, if there are questions, uh, I think you can put them in the in the in the in the chat and then we can yeah we can we can we can address them there is a question from kevin uh, can you 